How do you know you're in cranberry country? Well, at Makepeace Farms Country Store in Wareham, there is no shortage of hints. And over in Carver, you can order up a couple of Doug Beatons and a Mike Utley for lunch. We have 22 sandwiches, so probably like 18 of them named after growers. At the Berry Guys Farm Stand and Deli, sandwiches are named after their local celebrities, AKA cranberry farmers. We do get a lot of people calling and ask if they can get on the board, they just have to come up with a good sandwich. Owner Nancy Wanio, whose husband is a cranberry farmer himself, and number eight, by the way, says the Berry Guys isn't bogged down on cranberry cred. There's a fireman up there. Our construction man is the number seven and the number five. He's a plumber who comes here, so the George Pimento. Yeah, he's a great man. Everybody who comes here is great. We have great customers. Cranberries are more than a side dish on the state's agricultural menu. It's our biggest single food crop. John LeBeau, Mass Commissioner of Agriculture. It's a legacy that we're very proud of and we're doing our best to support. The state recently put its money where its mouth is. We're at the UMass Experiment Station here in East Wareham, where we recently announced $7.75 million uh, to update the facility here. For more than a century, the UMass Cranberry Station has helped local farmers with the latest in research. We find things that work, things that don't work, we fine tune it, we do more experiments. So that's primarily what we do here. Director Hilary Sandler takes us out into the bogs at the Cranberry Station. Here, plots are marked off for experiments with fertilizers, pest control, weed management and the like. Every spring we come out, we decorate. We call it decorating. I've been in this business about 30 years, and I think one thing that always amazes me is the passion that growers have. They love what they do. This is a resilient industry. I see a great future ahead for Cranberry. The growers here are single-minded about moving forward, but very innovative, very creative on how they do their business. It's a gamble. You gotta have nerves of steel if you're gonna be a cranberry grower because you just don't know what to spend because you don't know what you're gonna make. For Annie Walker, survival means supplementing her cranberries with honey and soaps. For Mike Paddock, solar power and a garden business allow him to stay afloat in the cranberry business. We wouldn't be in it at all if we didn't love it and it was part of our life and our family and what we do. You can't help it. It's the berries, it's the people, it's the being outdoors. It's a great feeling. It would be helpful if it was a profitable feeling, but we'll do it whatever it takes. Growers say the 2020 harvest was down slightly because of the long summer drought. The dry conditions meant farmers had to water the bogs instead of relying on rainfall, and that was costly to their bottom line. But the quality of the berries was strong, and overall it was a pretty decent year. And that is Chronicle for tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Shana Seymour. We hope that you and yours are staying safe and healthy, and Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs>